So this is the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro, not the one that flips 360 degrees, but the more traditional, like standard laptop. This caught my attention for one simple reason. Everybody that's unboxed this so far swears by the display. They say it's the best display they ever looked at. To me, this laptop is a LG Gram competitor. It, it's lighter, it, it's thinner, it, it's classy. It, it has that whole Gram appeal. I do commend Samsung for trying a different color, like this navy blue it is different than the traditional like silver laptops you're used to seeing. And more importantly, there, there's nothing crazy going on. You know, it, it's very simple. You have the Samsung logo, but it looks good. Now, IO is great. You know, for a thin laptop, we have lots of ports like HDMI, two USB type C ports. One is, you know, you can use for data or to charge your laptop, but only one of them is Thunderbolt 4. Then on the other side, you have your headphone jack, a full size USB port, a micro SD card slot. Now in terms of build quality, it's a light laptop at 2.3 pounds. So lighter than the Gram 16 and 17, but a bit heavier than the 14. There's not a lot of lid flex, a little bit, but not enough to be super concerning. But the one area that completely irks me is this touchpad. Yes, it's glass, but I feel like there's a bit of latency between my finger moving on it and the pointer on the display. It is using Windows Precision drivers, and even if you like pick up the laptop sometimes and you'll hold it in your hand, the touchpad will click. Which is really weird, like that should not happen when you pick up your laptop. I just get a lot of false clicks using this thing. Now the keyboard does have a very short but tactile travel distance. It's, it's definitely not my favorite keyboard to use and because this is the Canadian edition, they had to like make the enter button a bit smaller. Usually there's more of a horizontal approach to this, but they went vertical and sometimes I'll misclick and I'll hit this button over here. Now, of course you can open up this laptop with one hand, which is important to like five people out there, but everyone, and I mean everyone, is saying how good this display is. And like straight up, yes, it's a great display. The color gamut is fantastic. I even tested it out at different brightnesses because it's OLED. Usually OLED fluctuates, but I think this is a second gen panel and the color accuracy and gamut stayed the same. The one area that this display is kind of poor is when it comes to screen brightness. Like I was only getting 326 nits. That's really low for this type of display. I was expecting something at at least 400. The one area that I feel like Samsung could improve is the aspect ratio. Like we're in a time now where a lot of these vendors are switching over to 16 by 10 and then Samsung comes out with your standard 16 by 9. Now two more things about this display. When you open it up there's a tiny bit of screen wobble. It's noticeable but it's not massive. The good news though is that if you're typing aggressively like an animal on this keyboard it's not gonna move. The second thing is PWM flicker. This was a big issue on the previous 4K Samsung OLED displays you found on other companies' laptops. The good news though, this 1080p OLED display doesn't really have PWM flicker. It's so minimal that I don't think it's gonna be an issue for anybody. The other thing is this camera. It doesn't support Windows Hello. You have to use the fingerprint scanner for that, but it does have a 720p webcam and it looks awful. There's even a beauty mode, a clean mode, or a natural mode. These little features that you'd find on their Galaxy devices, they've incorporated into their Galaxy Book. So I usually don't go crazy about the software that's installed on these things, just because Windows 10 is Windows 10. But sometimes, manufacturers get a little excited about their own applications being on here. Now Samsung is one of these manufacturers, and there's at least eight to 10 Samsung apps on here. And at first I was like, wow, Look at all this bloatware, but I took a step back and realized that some of these applications are actually really important. Like if you're someone who owns a Galaxy device, whether it's a S21 Plus or a Tab tablet, then you want these applications on your laptop too, because let's say you're using Samsung Notes and you want it to sync it to your Galaxy Book, you need the Galaxy Notes app on here in order to do so. Now don't get me wrong, there are a couple of apps that are useless, like their Samsung Update app, because once you go into it, it just tells you to go to the Windows 10 Update Center to do all your installations there. But the most important app, at least to me, is QuickShare. This is Samsung's new AirDrop feature. If you've ever experienced AirDrop in the iOS ecosystem, it works super well, you know, just like you'd expect, but you can only do it 
with Galaxy devices. You need a Galaxy book and a Galaxy phone or a tab and the laptop. If you try it with anything else, it just won't work. Then there's performance. And this is using an Intel i7 11.6 5G7 CPU. It's not a bad processor, it's four cores. Obviously it doesn't have the same multi-core performance as the AMD chips that are currently available. It's paired with 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 15 inch AMOLED display, and a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD, at least the one you can buy. The cool thing though is the price. This is $12.99. If you were to buy like an LG Gram 16 or 17 with similar specs, you're paying anywhere from two to $500 more. But performance is interesting. You know, like it's nothing special. It doesn't come out on top compared to similar spec laptops in this category. It actually comes quite below. And you can see this whether you're doing like your typical synthetic Cinebench test or if you're compiling code where some budget AMD laptop will only take 30 to 40 minutes. Now the reason why it's performing like this is because Samsung is being super conservative. And the weird part is even though they're being conservative, fan noise is still kind of loud. Like this thing on high performance mode, which is a setting in their software, gets fan noise up to 50 decibels. If you put it on optimized mode, you can reduce the noise to about 45. But if you compare this to something like the Gram 17, which always stays around 40, that actually gives you better performance. Now to get inside, you have to remove four rubber pads plus four screws. And once you're in, you have a fairly big 67 watt hour battery, which got me really good battery life around 12 hours of use before needing to charge. But you can upgrade the RAM. The RAM is completely soldered onto the motherboard. So is the Wi-Fi card, but this is Wi-Fi 6E, so I doubt you'll ever have to swap it out. But if you wanna upgrade anything, the only thing you can do is upgrade the NVMe SSD. Now the read and write speeds on this guy are very similar to the Surface laptop because it's using that smaller form factor. Now the heating solution is kind of sparse. Like there's so much space here. They could have easily put another fan here with an extra heat pipe and this would have gave this laptop much better performance. So here's the thing. The Galaxy Book Pro has a MacBook problem because this thing is $1,299 and it doesn't have the best experience, you know? Touchpad is awful, keyboard is eh, especially with that enter key. It has loud fan noise under performance mode and even optimized mode. And on top of that, the display just doesn't get that bright. The MacBook Air, on the other hand, is significantly cheaper. It gives you just as good battery life, it gives you significantly better performance, and zero fan noise. If someone was to ask me, Matt, would you rather have this or the Gram, for example? I would pick the Gram every single time. It's a better computer. It has a more accurate touchpad, like you don't pick it up and it clicks, which is super weird. And it's actually accurate. Keyboard feels better to type on and the screen is 16 by 10. I think this is only very appealing for someone who has other Galaxy devices because the quality compared to the other products I mentioned is lower. But there is something to be said about this price. For $12.99, if you have anything to trade in, you can get this for a pretty good deal. And if that's you, then there's a reason to consider this. But if you don't have that trade in or marketing special, then I think the other products are the better option. I hope that cleared this up. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one.